Hey, I'm Steve from This Week With Cars, and today I thought we'd take a look at my 1956 Barkley SE328. It's been a couple years since I've had this car running, and it's a really nice day today, so I thought it'd be a great day to get this car running again and get it out. If you saw my video from the Milwaukee Concours a couple years ago, I did take this car to that car show, and I think that's the last time that I've had it running and driven it. I just checked and the battery in this car is from 2012, so I've probably been having problems with the battery for a long time. I went to the store, I got a new one. Let's get the battery in and see if we can get this car running again. You can see how small this car is compared to the Mustang next to it. This is a, an aluminum monocoque car. The body is fiberglass. It weighs only 600 pounds and the engine is a 328 cc engine. The car is front wheel drive. It's a two cylinder, two stroke Excelsior engine. This is the petrol tank right here behind the engine. Now some of these had the petrol tank behind the rear seats. Mine has a spare tire and a luggage compartment sitting there behind the seat. Now, I already have the battery out. The battery sits right here besides the engine. So I need to get my battery mounted, get it connected up. I did have to put a new connector, one of these battery cables. I just soldered this one on. The old one had fallen apart, actually broken half. We'll see if it starts, see how well it runs. And if I can get this thing running a little better, maybe I will be inclined to drive it a bit more than I do. I'll show you the inside real quick. For such a small, cheap car, it actually has some pretty nice uh, instrumentation here. You have a speedometer, nice. your petrol level, and a amp meter. A lot of people, when they look in this car, they think that you're actually sitting on the ground, but you're not. You can see there's a couple inches where the floor is further down up there. Well, there's actually bands underneath the seat, and that gives you some suspension. So you're actually not seated on the floor, and it's actually quite a comfortable car to drive. Around the back of the car, it's actually a little reminiscent of the AC Cobras, although this car came out many years before the AC Cobra. The car does use the motorcycle's original transmission. So this car has a manual sequential transmission. The original first gear has been changed into a reverse gear. So this car does have reverse and then three forward gears. Now let's throw the battery in. If we get it running, I'll show you more about this car. Where did my battery tie down go? I'm going to peel this sticker off of here so that the battery doesn't look quite so silly inside this car. What I usually do on this car, since I couldn't get battery with top posts on it, I just take the regular top post and I clamp it onto the terminals on this type of battery. Before I put the other side on, I'm going to put the clamp back on. This over here is a battery disconnect. I have taken it completely apart, but you don't need to do that to use it normally. To disconnect the battery, this is the disconnect position. It's nice because you don't have to take any of this apart. You just loosen it and that disconnects the connection between the battery cable and the battery. And then to take it for a drive, you just tighten it up. The new battery is installed. Let's for now assume that it is charged up, hopefully from the store. They had that charged. Next thing we'll need is fuel. I might need to mix them up. This is of course a two stroke. So this takes fuel and oil mixed together in a pre-mix. This does not have separate tanks for those. Let's see, let me grab a flashlight. Okay, it looks like the fuel level is pretty good. It looks like I have about a third of a tank right now. That should be enough to get it started. Go for a little drive. As with all motorcycles, you want to shut the fuel off when you're not using them. So we'll open up the valve here. And these are ammo carburetors and they do have ticklers. So these little buttons here push the float valve down. I can hold that down. And then you want to hold it until fuel starts to come out around the base of the tickler. And there is a tickler on both carbs. So I'll have to hold these down individually and get fuel into the carburetors. Usually you can hear them working and usually the doesn't take this long for the fuel to come out. So I'm not sure if my fuel valve is working correctly. I added some more fuel to the car to see if that would make a difference. And I can hear the fuel coming in now when I push the tickler down. 
Just hold this down until fuel comes out. There we go. You see petrol running down from the base here. I don't know if you can see that. See if you can see that better now. When I push this down, you can see the petrol come out when I push that down. Now I need to tickle the other carburetor. There it goes. Now the car should be ready to try to start. In case you're curious, that was a 45 to one uh, fuel to oil ratio that I put into the Barkley. I'm gonna close up the bonnet and we'll see if it starts. I'm going to have to move a bunch of cars to get this out. So go move a bunch of cars real quick. Take this outside and show you what it looks like driving around. Well, I think that's it for today. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.